Lord, we just now pray for your word this morning. That you'd guide and direct my lips, Lord, to share. That you would anoint the message today, Lord. And open our hearts to receive what you have for us today. Touch us in a special way, I pray. In your wonderful name. Amen. So today, our message. Are you inviting the devil to dinner? Now, I didn't pick this title to, to have it apply to any of you since we invited all of you to dinner today. But, uh, <coughs> question, are you inviting the devil to dinner? Let's say you were going to invite the devil to dinner. What are you going to feed him? What does he eat? Well, first thought might be to whip up a little deviled ham. <laughs> thought. Maybe you can fix some nice deviled eggs. <laughs> and then you got to finish the meal off with something nice, right? How about some devil's food cake? <laughs> now, I don't know if that's what he eats. Actually, the Bible tells me something different. But, so that somehow looks pretty good. So what does the devil eat? What is he looking for? Turn to Genesis 3, 14, 15. It says, So the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. That was the curse put upon Satan in the garden. It says he was cursed to eat dust. Well, what does that mean? So he's cursed to eat dust. We know that serpents don't really eat dust, do they? So what does that mean? Well, one of the things I learned in Bible school is that if something in the Bible doesn't quite make sense, read the Bible. The Bible always interprets itself. It tells us what it means. Just have to read a little more. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. With thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. We're the dust that the devil wants to feed on. If you doubt that, it says in Genesis 2, 7, And the Lord God formed man of what? The dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Genesis 18, 27 says, Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed, now I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Even Abraham knew that he was just dust. Reminds me of the little boy that heard that the Bible says, From dust we came, to dust we will return. And he was looking under his bed one day, and he ran to his mom and says, Mom, Mom, I looked under the bed, and there's either somebody coming or going. <laughs> That's why we clean the dust out from under our beds. <laughs> Psalm 103, 14 says, For he knows our fame, he remembers that we are dust. So we are the dust. Fate is cursed to eat the dust. It says in 1 Peter 5 eight, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So it tells us there that he's seeking whomever he can devour. Now remember, the important part of the scripture is he is like a roaring lion. Some people will say it wrong. The devil walks around as a roaring lion. No, he's like a roaring lion. The Bible tells us who the real lion is. Revelation 5, 5 says, But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. So we know the real lion is not the devil. The real lion is our Savior, Jesus. 
We don't want to forget that. That was not, he's just like a lion. He's not the real thing. We serve the real lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's the one that has the teeth. Now, Satan and demons are like flies. They feed off the garbage of our lives. That's how we feed them. It's by the garbage in our lives. Now, it's interesting, one of the names of the devil in the Bible is Beelzebub, or in Aramaic, Beelzebub, which means Lord of the Flies. Nice title, isn't it? In Greek, Beelzebul is dumb god. Satan's the dumb god. He just attracts flies. Demons are like flies. They annoy you. They bug you. They bother you. How many of you have a fly bugging you? Don't you, you probably were driving one day and had a big fly in the car. And you know what? I don't know why when you have a fly, they have to, and you're trying to drive or constantly, they have to land on your nose. <laughs> like, why on my nose? Or they'll start trying to fly into your mouth. Anything to annoy you. That's how demons are. They just want to annoy you and make life miserable. We feed and empower Satan with our sin. What do they feed off of in our lives? They feed off of our sin, the garbage of our lives. Repeated habitual sin leads us into bondage. But see, our world has made sin a disease, a form of mental illness, or an alternative lifestyle, or on and on you can go. We take sin and we give it a different title. Instead of calling it what it is, it's sin. And to get delivered from sin, we need to go to God. We need to pray and confess our sins to Him. The Bible says He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. But all sin starts with temptation. Nobody just goes out and just commits a sin. It always starts with a thought, the idea, temptation. And Satan is really good at making sin look appealing. 2 Corinthians 11, 14 says, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. You see, you're not going to sin if, it, if you really saw what the ultimate consequences were. He makes it look appealing. It's fun. Nobody's going to sin if it's not fun. Nobody's going to sin if it doesn't make them feel good. So the devil tempts us and makes it look like it's a good thing. See, there's pleasure in sin for a season. Hebrews 11, 25 says, Moses choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. But so many people would rather enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season and that season is going to come to an end. Then they're going to have to account for the sin. It's better to take care of the sin and not wallow in the pleasure of it. God always provides you with a way of escape. No temptation is overtaking you except such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Every temptation that overcomes us, it says that it's not so strong that we can't overcome it. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape. God always provides a way to escape it, that you may be able to bear it. The problem is sometimes we don't look for the escape. We're too busy looking at the temptation and wallowing it around in our mind. And we're missing the escape. There's stories in the Bible that give us illustrations of escape, like the story of Joseph. Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife, and what did he do? He ran. He saw the route to escape it. That's how we need to be. We need to run from temptation. And we need God to help us with that when we're in the midst of temptation. When we when we're close to Him, we're prayed up, and we're staying close to Him and His people, it's easier for the Holy Spirit to speak to us when that temptation comes along and says, ah, and the Holy Spirit, ah, don't, don't, you don't want to do that. But when we wander further from God, that still, small, gentle voice of the Holy Spirit is harder to hear. God has given us the tools to fight Satan. We must resist the devil. James 4, 7 says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, if we don't feed him, he'll go look for a meal somewhere else. If we're not feeding him with a bunch of garbage in our lives, he's going to go look for a meal somewhere else. 
It reminds me of this woman who planted this beautiful garden in her yard. And she'd go out every morning and sit and sip her tea and listen to the birds and watch the butterflies. And she just loved that time in her garden. Some days she'd spend all day just sitting out in her garden, listening to the birds and watching them feed. Well, one day, this little mongrel dog came along. And she didn't really like dogs that much, but that poor little dog looked hungry. So she put a bowl of food out for the dog. Well, every day the dog would come back and she'd give it more food. And pretty soon, the dog had taken up residence in her garden. It was staying there. And it was barking all the time. And it was chasing the birds and barking. And pretty soon the birds were no longer coming into her garden. And she was sitting outside one day with a very sad look on her face. And the neighbor walked by and they said, what's wrong? You look so sad. She says, well, I planted this beautiful garden so it would attract the birds and the butterflies. And I love sitting out here and drinking my tea every day and watching the birds. But now I got this ugly little mongrel dog that's chasing all the birds away and I don't know what to do. And the neighbor said, well, it's very simple. Stop feeding him and he'll go away. That's how sin is in our lives. That's how the devil is. When we're feeding him, He's going to stick around and make us miserable. But if we stop feeding him, he's going to go away and look for a meal somewhere else. And we need to remember that God's given us some tools to fight the devil. Remember I said that he's the Lord of the flies, so we need a spiritual fly squatter. In the Lord's Prayer, it tells us to pray and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So remember, when that old devil comes around, get out your spiritual fly squatter. <laughs> Swat it with it. Pray. You know, don't just put up with it. That's when we need to stop. We need to pray and say, Lord, lead me not into temptation with the evil. Deliver me from the evil one. Smack it with your fly swat. That's for the big flies. Then you need to get out the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. It's another tool that He's given us. And Jesus... When he was tempted by the devil, he taught us how to use the Word of God to fight the devil. Uh, illustrate that brought the devil. No. <laughs> there he is. The little devil. Luke chapter 4, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, it says, And Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan as was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing. And afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. Imagine fasting for 40 days. When those 40 days are over, you're hungry, aren't you? And it said the devil had been tempting him in the wilderness. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But what did Jesus do? See, the devil is tempting him with the lust of the flesh. His flesh is hungry. His flesh is in need. And the devil knows that. And that's one of the temptations is the lust of the flesh. He said, just turn this stone into bread. But Jesus answered and said, what? It is written. He got out the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That's right out of here. Deuteronomy 8.3. And he smacked him with the word of God. God gave him a good smack. But he came back. So then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So now it's the lust of the eyes. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give to you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. So now he's offering him all the kingdoms of the world. Can the devil do that? Sure he can. He says that the authority of it was given over to him. He was given authority over all the kingdoms of the earth. Jesus had not yet taken that authority back. He's going to come back someday and he's going to take authority over the earth. In the meantime, it's the devil that's in charge. But Jesus answered him and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. What? For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. Deuteronomy 6.13 
And he smacked him again with the Word of God. It says, Then he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, now he's trying to appeal to his pride. There are three types of temptation. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Throw yourself down from here. So now what does the devil do? The devil, hmm. You know, he knows the word too. So he quotes the scripture. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you and keep you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. That is out of Psalms 91. The devil knows scripture too. So he's trying to twist it around. He goes, well, if he's going to smack me with the word, I'm going to quote the word to him. But Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 6, 16. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. So the last time, he smacked him again with the word of God. We need to learn to do that. When he's tempting him, smack him. It's fun. Get the word out. Give him a good kid. He doesn't like it. He'll flee. That is kind of fun. <laughs> and it should be fun. Learn a little scripture. You know what? It doesn't even matter so much what scripture you memorize. Start with the one we learned in John. Jesus wept. The devil starts tempting him to say, you know, it's written that Jesus wept. And he's weeping right now because you're bothering me. You know, it's the fact that you're quoting the truth of the Word of God, the devil does not like the truth. Why? Because he is the father of all lies. That's what the Bible tells us. That's why we worship in service. When we're singing, we're singing truth. He doesn't like hearing the truth and he leaves. He gets out of here. So make that part of your life. Learn to use your spiritual fly squatter and pray. How often do we wallow around in temptation and we don't even stop to pray? Where demons are bug bugging us. They're just, we've got all these bad thoughts going on in our mind. They're accusing us of all kinds of things and saying we're no good. We just put up with it. Well, we need to get out the fly swatter and pray. When we're tempted, we need to get out the Word of God. Start reading it. You'll come across scripture. Quote it to it. Learn a few. If you have to write them down, carry it with you. Remember the one there's no temptation which is not common to man. But God has given me a, a way to flee. God, show me the way out of this temptation. Memorize that. Quote it. Don't invite the devil to dinner. He's not a good dinner guest. So we want to not feed him. We'll feed ourselves today. We've got some good food. But we're not going to feed him. Let's bow our heads for just a moment. You know, if you haven't invited Jesus into your life, you're feeding the devil every day, whether you know it or not. He's the ruler of your life. But by accepting Christ, you put an end to that. If you've not accepted Christ as your Savior, then do that today. If you'd like to be included in the final prayer here and say, you know what, pray for me. I want to accept Jesus as my Savior today. Just slip your hand up. Maybe you've come today and you're struggling with temptations in your life or just struggling with the enemy beating you up. I want to pray for you that God will help you to remember the tools that He's given you. Heavenly Father, I thank You and praise You for these that are here, Lord. Lord, all of us go through temptation every day. The first thing we should do every day is pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Help us to remember to do that when we open our eyes in the morning, Lord. Not to wait for the temptations to start, but to start out the day with that simple prayer. And Lord, when we find ourselves in the midst of temptation, help us to turn to your word and to turn to prayer and turn away from the temptation. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, show us the way out that we always know which way to go to flee the temptations that come in our lives and not give in to them, Lord. I thank you and I praise you for your word, Lord. 
I ask you to bless us with it today and bless us the rest of the day. In your wonderful